Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm the analog design engineer on this product. You've seen I Control Nintendo, and now you want to see how we've done it. The uh, digital processing is done by National Instruments SB Rio, but we had to create a custom daughter card to be the electro This custom daughter card is what does the signal acquisition, amplification, filtering, and digitizes the signal for the SB Rio to process it. Although the electroculogram signal is large for a bipotential measurement, it's pretty small compared to the rest of the environment. We're surrounded by electric fields from radio television stations, cosmic rays, Wi-Fi, etc. And these will all create interference for the signal. Check it out. Here you can see the noise that's present in the environment. This is 60 hertz noise from the power mains plus whatever other interference is in the area. Now this is actually stronger than the signal we're trying to measure. So how do we pick it up? Well, our signal is a potential difference between electrodes, but our interference should be about the same for each one. So, if we can amplify the difference between the electrodes and reject everything common to them, then we have our signal. To do this, we need a high-quality differential amplifier. The one we're using is Analog Devices 8221 Instrumentation Amplifier. It's low noise and has a high common mode rejection, so we can get the signal we want. The amplifier is set to amplify the differential signal by 10, enough to distinguish it from the remaining noise, but it can't be too high because of the electrode's half-cell potential. Anytime metal, like an electrode, touches an electrolytic solution like human skin, a potential difference occurs, also called a half-cell potential. In a battery, this is a good thing, but here, it's a problem. Because it's a difference, the amplifier will amplify the difference along with our signal, and if the gain is too high, we risk losing our signal. We have two choices in dealing with this half-cell potential, either calibrate it out or reject it entirely. If we want to sense absolute eye position, we have no choice but to calibrate it out. But since we're only interested in eye movements, we can reject it from the signal. We'll use a high-pass RC filter set to 0.1 Hz. This will reject the constant voltage, but still allow us to see changing voltage from eye movements. An RC filter is a resistor and capacitor. A capacitor looks like large resistance to low frequencies and small resistance to high frequencies. Therefore, the high frequency signals will pass on to our next amplifier and the low frequencies won't. The half cell potential is constant and therefore will be totally removed. Now that we've rejected that half cell potential, we need to amplify the signal some more, being careful not to add noise back in after all that work rejecting it. We use two amplifiers that are low noise and low offset to keep the signal clean. After it passes through this stage, the signal has been amplified about 90 times. For our final stage, we use a low pass filter set to 50 Hz to remove any high frequency noise, including that 60 Hz tone you saw earlier. Before the software can interpret the signal, it must be digitized. We're using an analog to digital converter that will take in the analog signal and output a series of pulses that the software can use to reconstruct the original signal. And now we come to our final issue, electrical isolation. With any medical device, there's always some risk of shock. Now our oculograph is just powered by 9 volt batteries, so even if there's a short, this is pretty harmless. However, our Nintendo, the TV, the SB Rio, that all comes from 120 volts wall power. So if there's a short in the transformer, you'll end up with 120 volts across the electrodes on your face. Nobody wants that. That's where Analog Devices 87401 Isolated Analog to Digital Converter comes in. After digitizing the signal, it magnetically couples it across the dielectric gap, so there's no electrical connection between the oculograph and the SB Rio. The 87401 can withstand 120 volts wall power indefinitely and over 3,000 volts for up to one minute, keeping us safe from shock. For more details, circuit diagrams, and layout, click the link in the description below.